Sheridan, I wanted to start with you first. First off, congratulations on your directorial debut. What an incredibly moving film you've all created. Speaking of which, this cast is so phenomenal. I understand you wrote personal letters to each of them. What made these okay. actors a perfect fit for these roles? And how did those personal connections play a part in bringing them on board? Um, That's funny. How did you know about the letters? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I've been pronounced by my producers famous for my letter writing but it's actually more just the desperation of being an unknown director where you have to persuade very talented people to board your project i knew that for my first film i wanted to do something that was completely about character and i really like films where you spend a lot of time with a small amount of characters and mm -hmm. one of my favorite films is my dinner with andre uh, I love the Before series by Linklater. And so just directorially, I was like, let me write something that I can hopefully pull off. And I, I was just like, let me see if I can get two people to be interesting. And then, and then I'll write a film with 25 people and $6 million or whatever. And because of that, with the film that I wrote, it was so, so, so important to get the casting right. And uh phil's work i i was completely aware of through uh a brilliant film that he was in called first reformed and then i also saw him in um, a derek c in france tv show called i know this much is true and i actually did not catch that phil was in i know this much is true because he's physically so different mm -hmm. his performance is so different and then it was my friend that reminded me and I was so blown away by that. And it was just crystal clear to me that um, that that he had to play Pete. And yeah, I wrote him a letter and he he obliged and <laughs> we met. It was kind of instantaneous of like, oh, this is like, you know, somebody who's in my tribe in terms of taste and, and mm. things. And with Dan, you know, uh, I had never seen actually the half of it, but when I met with him, it was so clear to me what a big heart he had and how thoughtful he was. And uh, we were just talking about it in another interview about, you know, Dan comes across, he's 6'4", and he's this big guy, and he looks like he's, you know, should be on the Heisman Trophy. And so that dynamic was super interesting to me but it was just so clear that he had the emotional capability because as you mm -hmm. saw on the film there is you know a lot of catharsis in in the film uh i just knew that he was going to bring that sensitivity and thoughtfulness to jake which is so key for his character yeah because it's you know he his performances if it goes that way kind of like a souffle you know it's not going to sit if it's not bang on and so he just brought that beautiful sensitivity to it so um that was a really long-winded answer but no it's a great answer and the casting is phenomenal on this and philip there's a powerful moment in the film where your character tells his brother that he often feels like a tourist in his own body you portray the nuances of mental health struggles so brilliantly capturing the reality of this lifelong journey i know that you're drawn to roles that challenge you to uncover the truth what was it about pete that spoke to you what discovery did you make about yourself in finding the truth of this character mm. i guess when i first read it uh what i love about sheridan's script is like everyone in the movie is just trying their best um there's no right or wrong um everyone's kind of struggling with the tools that they have and like the roles that they play within a family i like that pete was someone and i relate to this who feels some deep emotions feels lonely doesn't know where to kind of put them or like who to uh share them with and he he also just makes jokes and kind of try to try to keep it light um, and the constant dynamic of like, you know, you could have an older brother or a younger brother or sister or sibling, and you both can learn a lot from each other. And you both can, you know, on the surface be uh, one kind of label, but actually um, represent something else. And I thought it was just beautiful. And like, and um, it felt so personal to Sheridan and 
I think I try to gravitate towards um, work that is really personal and that can make people feel less alone within their feelings, maybe mm. if they, they watch it. So I don't really know. And also just kind of like my own struggles with um, mental health stuff and, and people close to me and kind of trying to like understand that better, navigate that better and try to like tell a truthful story that deals with that um, in like a pretty earnest way, which I think is kind of badass um to do these days daniel another reason why i think this film is so impactful is how it shows that mental health affects not only those suffering but those around them and jake's journey of realizing that you you don't have to fully understand when, what somebody is going through to be there for them is so incredibly transformative and you brought so much depth to that how did you approach this character especially in that pivotal moment when he also lets his own walls down and vulnerably admits to his brother that he needs them? yeah yeah no it's so much of it's just about openness. I think, again, like these guys, mental health and suicide has been a part of my life in, 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 in a million different ways of, of like did friends that have dealt with it, a personal mental health journey and, and a lot of things. So it's been a story that I've been very keen to kind of enter into in some sort of way as, as an artist. And like, like Phil said, it's just like, it's such an incredibly written, complex, detailed script and screenplay that kind of encapsulates all these different things. And, and particularly with, with Jake, it's such a completely different aspect. And, and a lot of the time with mental health story, the, the focus is really solely on those who are dealing with it. And, and it's and, and so important to get those stories as well. And, but with the way that they kind of gave Jake this opportunity to really kind of show how he's been dealing with it and, the, and the pain that, that he's kind of going through in a way that doesn't victimize either of them, but really mm -hmm. kind of just labels it for the truth of what, how that sits. I think it, it, he did it, um, Sheridan did it just so wonderfully. And so to be able to just go in there, stay open, stay connected, and then kind of really just focus in on the heart and the soul of where these characters are at and, and stay present. And Sheridan, as the guys were saying, the film beautifully contrasts the light and the darkness and finding humor in difficult situations. So it makes it feel so grounded and true to life. How challenging was it for you to totally find that balance? Why was that so important to you as a screenwriter? For me, like, I could never in my life write a straight comedy. Like, comedy for me is like situational and it comes from character. The aha moment for me when I was you know, thinking of the idea and then writing it was just Pete, basically. It was really Pete and the kind of the dynamic between the brothers where the humor would come from. And so I just tried to really honor that. And I, you know, I have an older brother. We we share some parallels to the dynamics. He's a very funny guy. I am kind of a tight sort of controlling guy um, who could be a little bit overbearing. And so... You know, I was thinking of my brother a lot when I was writing this film and how he's just so funny. And I think he's literally the funniest person I know. And so that's where it came from. It was never, oh, let me write a suicide movie, but I want it to be. It was just when this idea sort of really hit me and I just saw it was so instantaneous when when I thought of the idea that I had Jake and I had Pete, I knew everything about them. It was very strange that it just sort of struck me like a lightning bolt and I could have written like a 600 page version of this script like it was very easy to sit in the voices of these people so the humor really comes from the characters but I'm glad I'm glad that you say that because that's um that's what I'm hoping for is that people realize that yeah it's about mental health and it's about suicide and that's super important but it's also just a super entertaining fun yeah. emotional ride of a film like and a journey hey sheridan did i ever tell you that i had my my older brother record all of my lines before we shot the movie no you didn't <laughs> and i listened to it like driving oh that's fascinating yeah, yeah, yeah which was like i don't even yeah which is its, its own interesting thing whoa huh yeah kevin just broke that kevin you I got first scoop <laughs> 
that's the, the beauty of these interviews, right? You get to l- learn more about each other throughout this project. And you know that, that the cinematography is also beautiful in this film. And Philip, you know, the segue off what you were saying earlier, you know, Pete is the first to acknowledge that these contrasts do exist. And there's such an emotional roller coaster that you in particular take audiences on where it's there are moments of introspectiveness, but they're where you can feel his wheels turning, but there are also moments of outward humor. As an actor, how did you navigate the emotional range and how did you keep this character so grounded while shifting between those contrasting tones? A lot of that was just um, the writing, um, uh, the conversation that Sheridan wrote, but also what's cool about these scenes is because it's two people in kind of like single locations. Uh, The circumstance is kind of like both sad and funny at the same time. Um, And so any uh, scene can kind of go in any different direction. And I feel like if you're just like bouncing off the other person, depending upon what Dan's doing or how I feel, there was kind of like free range to like kind of express myself. And I, and I, it's funny, I, I, I just was doing a Q&A of this other movie that I, I did. And um, sometimes when you're playing a similar thing where like sometimes you play a scene so like straight um, and it gets a big laugh because of circumstance. Um, and so actually when you're shooting a movie, like sometimes the best laughs come when you see it with an audience and you're like yeah. oh that was funny I didn't even know that that was funny but it, I guess that, that was kind of funny there's something magical uh, about the, the festival run of, of different films yeah and that's what that's what's cool uh about you know shooting a movie and then you know Sheridan and then shoot you know because we do a lot of different takes and stuff and he picking the take and then in the context of of assembling it with the music that can that you know that that all shapes like how a scene goes, but so much of it, it just was walking a tightrope and it was just, it was just me and Dan, like almost the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like the best time, the, 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 the best times sometimes are when you finish a scene and you're like, I don't even know what the hell that was. Like, I hope that was something. And usually that's the best when you're, you're kind of unaware of like, you're just kind of stumbling together. Mm-hmm. Perfect segue to this next question for you, Daniel. But throughout your career, you've often collaborated with storytellers who are making their directorial debut with these really deeply personal projects. How does work in that environment push you creatively and open up your own creative process? Yeah, no, it's, again, I think for, for me, so much of art that, that matters, it comes from passion and, and, and just interest. And so to work with writer directors or, or directors that are kind of going into their debut, it's obviously there's so much that they want to tell and there's so much story that they have to give. And so for me, it gives such an incredible through way into humanity and the lives of the characters and informs so much of performance and, and just be so collaborative in that space. So it's, I don't know, I think that there's nothing better than working with people that are as passionate as you are. And I, I try to go into all my projects with that kind of perspective. And so it's been, it's been amazing. I mean, Sheridan's been, I mean, such an incredible example of that. He, he cares so, so vividly for all of what we're talking about. And to be able to go into that space and really enter in fully, it's, it's such a gift. And Sheridan, you've mentioned before that this film has gave as much to you as you've given, given to it. And it was during the filmmaking process that you discovered you had a rare eye condition, RP, which you were really open about with the entire team. How did embracing your own vulnerability help you create that space for the actors to go to the emotional depths needed for their characters? And what impact did that have for, for the cast? That's a very, very good question. Because <laughs> that's certainly something that was on my mind. So yeah, as you alluded to, um, I was diagnosed with an, a degenerative eye disease in the middle of kind of development of the script in January of 2020. And for a brief time, I was like, I don't know if I, sh- you know, should I maybe not be in film because I was diagnosed legally blind. I can see like central vision, but my peripheral vision is diminished. And what really got me back on the horse was just realizing that I was pushed against the wall in a very clarifying way where I was like, if I give up on this movie, I don't think it will exist. And a lot of people say that, oh, you're trying to write a film that's never been written, but it really felt that way. And a couple months later, I went public about my disability and I was very scared going into it thinking, oh, what are the actors going to think of me, you know, but what I 
drew upon was all of my films and really a theme throughout not only my work, but my life is vulnerability that, you know, with, I, I had sort of a difficult childhood and there's been a lot of sort of personal turmoil in my life and discovering film and the art of film was so powerful for me because I realized that all these stories I had in me that at the time felt like scars were really an opportunity to share with the world what it was like to go through these things. And so uh, I just realized like I, I'm going to tell everybody about it. And I think even in the letter that I wrote to Phil and the letter that I wrote to any of the cast and some of the crew that we got on board, I disclosed it. And I just saw it as an opportunity of like, okay, I'm going to share something personal and big about me. And I think that maybe that will be an invitation to everybody else to do the same and and draw on their lives because the film really starts to sing in my opinion when everyone is putting so much of themselves into it and it wasn't yeah. just the cast that did that it was the crew as well that you know because of what this film is about or my disability or whatever like crew members would tell me oh i had a friend who passed away or you know everybody was operating on this kind of vulnerable level and so I'd like to think that cosmically and sort of bewilderingly to me that that experience made this a deeper, richer film, you know? And so I, I believe that I believe that my disability enhances my point of view and as, as mm. an artist. And I think little brother is hopefully a testament to that. Credit to you for being so open. Cause it does start from the top down. Well, other than that, I think I have time for one more question, but it you touched upon this already, but there is a component of filmmaking that's supposed to be entertainment, which this definitely is, but the films that really do stand the test of time are those that have something to say. Having brought Little Brother around the festival circuit, what has it been like getting to experience those conversations firsthand and seeing the impact that you're all creating with your performances and with the story? Going on kind of what Sheridan said too, I think um, film for me and like art in general, um, some of the things that have made me feel like the most alone within my feelings and kind of um, the like um, self-labeled like negative or, um, you know, uh, what's the word I want to use? Like things about myself or the experiences I've had uh, seeing a movie or something or it, like seeing people vulnerably show their emotions has made me feel less alone. The making of this movie was so amazing because of how much I feel like almost everyone involved in it, cast, crew, have, you know, been around or dealt with um, this kind of subject. And um, that itself was cathartic and healing. And then going and playing it in, in um, you know, in rooms of people, it's like we, I've, you know, statistically, we've probably all um, um, uh, been around or um, relate to, you know, mental health struggles within ourselves, our families, friends, stuff like that. Um, and so it's been really beautiful. Um, the Some of the best things have, uh, experiences have been people, it because I think we've tried to be so vulnerably opus, open in like the, the making of it, um, it kind of invites other, the people that watch it to come and be uh, vulnerable and open with themselves and to kind of like share in that. Not only is it amazing, to know that you created something that affects someone else, but also for me to be like, oh, yeah, I feel less alone because we all struggle. We're, we're all, mm -hmm. we're all, the, the human experience is, is beautiful, but also challenging. Um, and it's kind of amazing to um, make something that uh, makes everyone feel more uh, connected and similar than different, which, which is kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, so, so pretty much perfectly. Um, I think I think for me, it's it's been very similar in my experience of how I take in movies is so much of its entertainment and escapism, but so much of it also is like figuring out more about myself and about the people around me. Um, and, and through this, I think we, we've had so many incredible examples of movies that have kind of done that for me that kind of allowed me to feel safe kind of entering into movies doing the same thing. And working along with collaborators like these two guys and, and the entire cast and crew, it, it really was something that, okay, let's, let's take it seriously. Let's, let's really give everything to it. And if we do that, then maybe we have something that's worth the 
kind of like the vulnerability that it takes to actually enter into it as a viewer as well. And so hopefully they're able to learn from that and feel less alone, but also kind of feel like they're, they're recognized and then they're seen through it.